Hi, my name is Courtney Racy, and I'm the assistant to the director of Identity Assurance at the IRS. Identity Assurance is responsible for coordinating strategy and policy for authentication, authorization, and access, which we refer to as A3, across the entire IRS. To carry out that work, we collaborate with both internal and external, external partners to ensure that taxpayers can securely access IRS services while also protecting their data from identity theft and fraudsters. Now, this includes all service channels, uh, such as the phone, in person, online applications, mail. Uh, and the IRS really uh, has a lot of people to identity proof. Uh, so we identity proof and authorize tens of millions of taxpayers every year across uh, both digital and non-digital channels. And we have to balance tax fraud and identity theft with um, available IRS resources and customer burden for each of those interactions. And none of those uh, tens of millions of taxpayers who are calling the IRS are doing so just because they want to. It's not really a fun weeknight activity. Uh, they need to resolve an issue to meet their tax obligation. And we know that. So we're always striving to provide better service to taxpayers, to help them get the service that they need in the most convenient and efficient way possible based on their need and their unique situation. And we're always trying to provide seamless taxpayer experience when someone needs to go between service channels for whatever reason. Now, ensuring that the taxpayer seeking service is who they say they are is so critical for the IRS mission. Um, protecting that taxpayer from identity theft and fraud uh, protects them from you know, events that could have a snowball effect on other areas of their lives or cause them increased burden to correct those issues and public trust and that our agency is gonna protect that information that we, they give to us as part of that tax filing process is, is really essential to all the work that we do. But identity proofing and authentication processes can sometimes make it difficult for the IRS to provide a seamless taxpayer experience across service channels. Uh, right now, each of our service channels has its own processes, procedures, data collection uh, for identity proofing and authentication that were designed um, individually to meet the needs of that channel. And individuals can't leverage an identity proofing event from one channel to access another. So, for example, if you call the IRS and you go through the process to identity proof, you can't then you know, use that uh, identity proofing event to uh, log on to an online application or go in person uh, for service. And except for our online channel, uh, individuals have to identity proof each time that they come in, uh, even if they're accessing that same channel as before. Uh, there's also a lot of threats, right, to people and fraudsters coming into the IRS through um, various channels based on those differences. So without an orchestrated omni-channel approach to identity proofing and authentication, those process differences can lead fraudsters um, to move to non-digital channels as the digital channels become more stringent and effective to satisfy uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology or NIST digital identity guidelines and other federal mandates. So we have been moving to increase digital identity standards that include strong uh, identity evidence and checking the authenticity of those uh, evidence documents with the issuing source. And as you all probably know, there's a tendency for fraudsters then to go to those legacy channels, such as the phone or mail, that don't have to comply with the same standards. So we don't want to just move fraud, you know, from our digital channels to our non-digital. 
Uh, the launch of IRS's new digital identity proofing platform, which we refer to as Secure Access Digital Identity, or SADI, um, in June of 2021, presents an opportunity for the IRS to pivot from its current uh, service channel silos and embrace an omni-channel approach for A3 processes, technology, and data analytics. And these capabilities provide the IRS with a framework to develop innovative solutions to enhance fraud protection and improve customer experience. So let's step back for a second and talk a little bit about SADI um, and that digital identity proofing platform um, that's providing us the opportunity to have a digital identity credential uh, that currently is being used for online applications, but provides um, you know, a possibility of using that to access service across the IRS, including non-digital channels. So IRS launched SADI as our next generation identity proofing solution for online transactions in June of 2021 to pre protect the Advanced Child Tax Credit Update Portal. It leverages a credential service provider or CSP who identity proofs the taxpayer and then provides the IRS with a digital identity credential. Uh, we expect and have seen better accessibility because the CSPs have a help desk, virtual in-person proofing, and an expanded evidence document uh, options compared to our legacy system. And it provides fraud protection at the NIST 863.3 levels, including going back to the issuing source of evidence documents. Now, those listening in today may have already had the opportunity to use SADI. Uh, if you've gone into that child tax credit update portal, either to unenroll from advanced child tax credit payments or to update information related to your payments. Now, with SADI, taxpayers move seamlessly from irs.gov to the CSP website to start the registration process. And then they complete all the steps uh, when initial identity proofing and registering with that CSP. Free certification is only required uh, for what is deemed as stale accounts, uh, which means that it's been 18 months of inactivity uh, for their account. Now, users are eventually going to be able to access all IRS online applications utilizing that single digital identity credential. Uh, for CTC up launch, we issued more than 3.9 million uh, IAL2 plus liveness detection credentials in just 61 days, which is the largest issuance of portable digital credentials issued for a single application in American history. The IRS is moving more and more applications behind SADI throughout fiscal year 22. And as we do move more of those applications behind SADI, taxpayers are gonna be able to do so many things with that one credential uh, beyond what's available in the child tax credit portal. In the coming months, SADI is gonna allow taxpayers to better access to get their transcripts, both for tax purposes or for buying a home, to view their payment history or set up a payment plan, approve or reject authorization requests from tax professionals, access a statement of their advanced uh, child tax credit payments for reconciliation at filing, and view uh, some IRS notices. The scale, scope, and success of SADI positions the IRS as a leader amongst the federal government for federation. So while this federated approach currently includes working with one credential service provider, IRS is looking into additional CSPs and will explore working with other federal agencies on the shared use of these credentials. This would allow American citizens to access digital services across the entire government using just one digital identity uh, by logging into that shared CSP. Now, the omni-channel strategy that my organization has been developing together with our business and IT partners would bring this federated approach to the next level. Uh, our omni-channel vision is to provide seamless taxpayer experience that's secure, inclusive, and consistent across all channels. 
using a digital identity while also leveraging service-wide customer interaction information. Potential examples of how IRS could leverage that digital identity for non-digital channels inc include uh, utilizing a click-to-call feature when logged into IRS online account, leveraging multi-factor authentication for taxpayers with a digital identity to strengthen that authentication process when they're on the phone or in person. IRS is committed to exploring innovative approaches um, to technology that would strengthen A3 omni-channel capabilities and functionalities. Um, we're creating digital identity solution use cases and related tech technology requirements uh, for leveraging a digital identity on non-digital channels. We're conducting an environmental scan to identify potential technical solutions, procedures, and processes that we may be able to use. Uh, and also we are evaluating innovative solutions through our innovations program to meet the needs of taxpayers and IRS for those particular use cases. Now to support Federation, IRS is involving other agencies in its exploration of a solution to leverage digital identity for non-digital channel authentication. This allows the government to evaluate technology for shared use cases to see whether agencies can provide similar authentication methods as part of a federated approach uh, to try to enhance customer experience through familiar processes and also potentially lower government costs through the use of a standardized shared, shared service model uh, that allows for cost sharing across agencies using that same service or product. Now, I expect that having a federated omni-channel approach to identi identity proofing and authentication would decrease burden for citizens needing non-digital service and also strengthen security of those non-digital channels. Uh, imagine what great customer experience it would be if citizens could use just one digital identity to access both digital and non-digital services across the entire government. We hope to someday achieve that future state through our omni-channel mission to modernize non-digital channels and streamline business and data practices across IRS service options to strengthen security and improve the taxpayer experience. Uh, we are trying to gain better insight into omni-channel authentication and authorization through development of tools and plans to address internal A3 data limitations that currently make it difficult to see information across service channels. And also, as I mentioned, testing innovative approaches, including not just technology, but also processes. Um, but to make that happen, we need help from those who have come before us. We are aware that industry has been creating, testing, and leveraging omni-channel solutions before now. And information about those experiences can help guide us as we uh, embark on this endeavor for the IRS. So I'm here today not just to tell you what we've been working on this area on on in this area, but also to ask that you reach out if you know of any approaches or technology out there that could help us accomplish our mission and move the government towards an omni-channel approach to authentication. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk with you today about the exciting work happening in omni-channel authentication space right now at the IRS. With your help, we can provide the most secure, seamless taxpayer experience possible.